crayon, an instrument of art. No way crayon can harm you in any way. Except it got me into hospital. So this happened when I was in high school. And our main character is me. As a grumpy teenager. Just like all teenagers, small and kind of angry. Be careful he bites. I have an art class that day, and they want us to bring crayon. I'm not sure why it's specific must be crayon, but it's art class, baby. But as a rebellious teenager as I am, I decided, I'm not going to bring crayon today. Don't get me wrong, I love art. If not, I won't be doing this. But let's be honest, if video games is a homework, you probably won't do it anyway. Which is funny, because the crayon is literally sitting right next to my back. I could have just picked it up and put it into my bag, and the whole thing would not have happened. And I would not be telling this story, and I don't have to animate all of this. Animation is hard. The day goes by nice and all, until art class that is. Turn out, most of the class decided to agree with me that day. That crayon is stinky. 36 out of 40 of us did not bring crayon. Now this is somewhat a coincident moment. Our teacher, uh, let's call her Kate. Kate is very pissed. She wants us to do a hundred times of squatting for punishment. <laughs> we are teenagers, we are energetic. A hundred times of squatting, that's like nothing. Times 36 of you. What? So we have to do 3600 times of squatting. For a normal human being, you would probably refuse to do it and just not do it. But for some reason, we did it anyway. We have to do it in the hallway. I stay in a tropical area, so it's like 30 degrees Celsius outside. And you have no idea how hard we are sweating. Surprisingly, we actually finished all 3,600 times. Except me. I only did around 2,800 times. Yeah, I'm kind of a wimpy kid. After the class, it's recess time. My palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy, and I want to go to the canteen to get some mum's spaghetti. But you know what else feels like spaghetti? My legs! I'm walking like a newborn deer walking on ice. The canteen is in the basement, and my class is like at the second floor. It's kind of a long walk. When I'm walking down the stairs, my brain is sending a message to my legs, telling it to step forward. But my leg decided to kick myself instead. At the end, I still got my spaghetti. It's good. After that, nothing really happened that day. Day 2, I woke up. I feel some of the worst pain in my leg I ever had in my life. So far. I'm having trouble walking, but in my head, I'm just telling myself it's probably the pain after the extreme leg day. So I still went to the school anyway, and half the class did not turn up. I actually feel kind of proud that day because I'm not as wimpy as I thought. Until evening, that is. I was using a toilet doing toilet stuff, and I realized there's blood in my pee. I would like to draw here, but it's disgusting. I told my parents, and we went to the doctor. The doctor said, it's probably nothing, and it's totally normal. And we went home, and everyone lived happily ever after. Except no. Now come think of it, doctor is saying the blood inside my pee is totally normal. Yeah, I don't think he's qualified as a doctor. Day 3, I woke up, and I'm in full panic mode. I can't feel anything in the lower half of my body, except pain. I can't move anything except my toes, I'm not sure why I can move the toes. Because I'm in my room alone, so I have to scream to call my parents. This is like 5 in the morning, by the way. My dad have to carry me to the car because we are going to the hospital. By the time we arrive the car, I feel like peeing, so my dad have to carry me off the car, put me in the toilet, position me just right for me to do it. And now my pee look worse. Let me describe it this way. Imagine yesterday is Ping Jin, and today is Ku Aid. In the hospital, we did an x-ray scan and turned out all the muscle and blood vein in my legs are all broken. Yep, congratulations. They put me in a wheelchair and told me I have to stay in the hospital. But before that, they have to do some procedures, so they told us to get some lunch and do some packing back home. We had lunch, but instead of going home to do some packing, my parents decided to go to school to meet Kate instead. But you know who doesn't want my parents to meet Kate? The school! So my parents is arguing with the teachers in the school office, and I'm just sitting there, in the corner, not sure what is happening. At the end, we did not meet Kate, and I have to stay in the hospital for about two weeks. After that, I still have to do another two weeks of reha re 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 rehabilitation exercise. You know those exercises that war machine do after civil wars? Yep, those exercises. Basically, I need to teach my legs to walk again. And the story just kind of ends there. There's still some positive outcome out of the whole situation. Like I got an elevator pass. Our school is like 11 floors plus 5 floors of basement. And for some reason, the students are not allowed to use the elevator. So by having that pass, make me the coolest kid in town, baby. Except no, because everyone's using it anyway. Let's be honest, who would walk 11 floors? And Kate, surprisingly, did not get fired. But she became a totally different person. It's like the secret service replaced her with a clone or something. She became a very good teacher, and I'm glad, because less people would get hurt. So what is the moral behind the story? I don't know. Bring crayon to school, I guess.